Hello, you lovely people. Okay, we're going to do a, a real-time recipe, and this time we are going to be bigging up this beautiful thing, squash. It could be pumpkin. Uh, it's a wonderful family, uh, the Zuka family. Um, you can get butternut squash everywhere. Um, it's an amazing vegetable. Um, low in sat fats, uh, low in calories. It's delicious, full of wonderful nutrients and vitamins, great for your hair, your eyes, your nails. Anyway, um, the thing is, I kind of order this every single week. This is a part of the Oliver household, okay? Um, and if you kind of just think about it, being sort of resourceful and economical about your time, having little tricks in your fridge, um, having something that has the capacity to be a base for a million things as far as your imagination would go. Um, but also, if you think about it, it costs money when you turn an oven on. And I know we don't really think about it very often, but how often do you use a whole oven? Christmas? I mean, never. So I put in a whole squash every week, week in, week out, all the time. And I've got a few jobs that I do like that. And what we do in about an hour and a half, at about 180 degrees Celsius, is turn this wonderful hard vegetable into something, come and have a look at this, that is beautiful, uh, caramelized. Um, just have a look in this tray here, see how it cooks. Look at that, look, 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 look. See that? It's almost like honey or maple syrup, okay? And that, my friends, is natural sugars. And this is why, oh, delicious. This is why um, pumpkin can be so good for desserts, okay? So come, 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 come. Let's split it open. And inside, of course, we want all of this. Look at the, look at the skin. Okay, loads of people would throw the skin away, okay? Well, let's just talk about the skin. Now, between the flesh and the skin um, is, in my opinion, the sweetest part. So only a mad person would throw that away because it's delicious. I mean, come, come. So in here, we've got this amazing meaty flesh. When it's warm, it's wonderful. Here we have seeds, and you can literally just take those out, roast those, put a little bit of chili, cumin, nice things like that. And we've got... So just wonderful food, okay? So, this is real-time recipes. Um, there's no cuts. Have a little look, let's get some bearings. Now, this is our kind of rough, and it's a temporary office. Um, you can see it's quite um, messy. We've got all our props here, um, all of our plates. Um, uh, we've got all of our, actually it's, it's, it's a bit of a mess, but don't, let them know that I said that, because they get a bit worried. Um, but yeah, all the equipment. Tea towels over here. Here's the director, look at him, isn't he lovely? Um, and look who's just walked in the office. Gennaro Contal, he's eating. Eating as usual. Mr. Contaldo here. Here's all the lovely girls that we work with every day. They do loads of research for me and testing of the recipes and shoots with the mag and stuff like that. Um, and then, um, my office up there. Um, it's quite nice, really, isn't it? So, should we do some cooking? Good girl. Okay, let's go. Um, so, um, I just wanted the thing about real time recipes is with editing and stuff like that, you can, you know, I don't want to trick you. I want you to see what we're doing here. So, once you've roasted this squash, we're going to take a half a squash like this. We'll remove the seeds. Janara, come round, darling. Um, you're being ever so quiet and polite. Yeah. Um, don't be formal. Um, just, um, and I'm gonna use half of the squash, like that. Let's use the skin. You can take the skin out or not. Janara, do you wanna be my commie chef today? I am indeed. Tell me what um, you do it, and I do it. Okay, if you can add stir, if you can just mush up um, the squash. Um, we don't wanna make it into baby food, okay? So we can just mash it up. The skin, we can just kind of chop up, tear up. Um, I'm using cottage cheese. This is a really delicious, I used to hate it, but I hated it without any kind of understanding of it. It's really, it's, it's, it's low in calories, uh, but it's clean, it's fresh. It's got a milkiness around it and then curds of lovely gorgeousness. And when they cook, um, there's a kind of bounce to it. Almost a tiny bit like mozzarella, okay? Yes. So we have 150 grams of good quality um, cottage cheese in there. If you wanted to swap that out for ricotta, you can. That's no problem at all. We're going to go in with 100 grams uh, of self-raising flour, which is about one and a half tablespoons there. 
we're going to go in with one gorgeous free-range egg. And what we're going to make, lovely people, um, is some fritters. Beautiful squash fritters with sage butter. Serve that with a lovely green salad. And that is a wonderful meal to give someone that you love. So um, the handsome Gennaro Contado is, look at the way he stirs. No one stirs <laughs> like him. Bless um, I'm going to take this. To be honest, we didn't really need this. this no, we don't. You know, I was overcomplicating. Over you don't need this. Um, Gennaro, you love making fritters, don't you? I do indeed. Oh my God, for that's and so it, good. It's, in Italy, they use fritters a lot, don't they? It is indeed. Pumpkin squash, they love them. Make those lovely fritters. Especially you set with the ricotta, so it's very nice as well if you want to use to. So what I've done is I've got a nice non-stick pan, guys, at medium heat. You can see what Gennaro's doing. Just, just have a little look at that. Now, now the pot, I used to think that cottage cheese was just like, cottage cheese, it's just like any cheese, it's got its own distinct use, flavour. And I think like this, it works really, really well. I'm going to season this up with salt and pepper. Uh, I'm also going to bulk up the seasoning with the wonderful savouriness of Parmesan. Yes. I'm not really sure how much, let's just call it like... Just put them inside. 20 grams, 30 grams, you know, just to give it a lovely little whip. That's probably not even 20 grams, right? So we'll put a bit in and some on. And then a little spice, uh, some nutmeg is quite nice uh, as well. So once Gennaro's done that, mm. uh, he's just going to get uh, nice big spoonfuls mm. uh, of the fritter. And we're going to put this, just like that, into the pan. Now, I just want a little bit of olive oil in the pan, about a tablespoon. Um, we'll cook like, let's say, three or four. Um, three or four spoons per person. And this is a really easy recipe. You can do it in batches. So if you've got kids or friends coming home at different times, um, you can kind of cook a portion. You know, in my life at the moment, same for Gennaro, we've got kids coming back from school, different things. Um, it's one of those dishes you can just have raw and you just almost cook it like a pancake. Um, on the first, uh, once uh, this beautiful um, fritter has been kind of nice and golden on one side, probably like, I don't know, what, 40 seconds? You yeah, something done? like that. Um, we'll turn it and we're going to add a herb. Now come and have a look at this, guys. This is sage. And honestly, like, um, when you eat sage raw, it's disgusting. It is bitter. It's acrid, it's just, I mean, it's awful. But when it hits hot fat, butter, olive oil, something marvellous happens, doesn't it, Jannar? It gives us such a lovely flavour. Also sage with the pumpkin, it is incredible. The balance of sage with pumpkins is a perfect marriage. So what we're going to do is um, Gennaro romantically, um, illustriously, and sexually. <laughs> I love it. It's going to turn the fritter. What's funny about that? You're a very virile man, Gennaro. There's women all around, and men all around the world that just love you, right? So look, come and have a look at this. I'm just going to turn this up a little bit. Yes, you need to. I'll try to. I think I turned it down by mistake. Okay. We'll give it another little second. Yeah, there yeah give it another second. Give it another second. Do you reckon okay. it's a little bit loose? Yeah, that's quite yeah, nice. That's quite nice. You can always adjust we'll it We'll turn it over that. again. Yeah. Come on. That's it. That's it. Leave that. Leave well, don't, don't feel you've got no, to rush no, it. No, no, no. So what we're... I mean, just, just so you know, I mean, a little bit like pancakes, the first one you make, you're always trying to kind of focus in on your pan control. And I might have stitched up Gennaro a little bit because I turned the pan, yeah. the pan down. Um, but this will go crispy and delicious. But more to the point, guys, what you're seeing is we've, it's quite scruffy. I see. And that's, uh, right, and that's fine. Okay? We, we don't want perfect quenelles. We don't want perfect rounds. It's boring. Life's too short. Let it fall <laughs> off the spoon. Let it be rustic. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put some little knobs of butter in and yeah. around here. Now, yes. if you wanted to put, I don't know, some uh, mushrooms, if you wanted to put some olives, you could. We just need a few little sage leaves, like this, and we'll keep cooking it. And the minute they hit the fat, can you smell it? It's just another level. It's so beautiful. So, we're going to cook that. We don't have to rush it, Gennaro. We'll no, just take no. our time. Um, I'll oh, get ready gosh. to serve this up. 
Um, I'm going to get a nice little, nice little plate. Just a little longer, just a little bit. Yeah. They're all right, Mark. They're, they're all right the way they are. Do you think I didn't put enough flour in? I put one and a half tablespoons. It's 100 grams, right? Yeah, look at that. Look at that. It's yeah. old, isn't it? Sorry, everyone, I was just doubting my quantities slightly, but we're getting there. Yeah, you will. It's a little on the soft side. I might have been, I, I, maybe I could have added a little bit more flour, but. I don't know, I'll have a look. Do you know what it's. Oh, this is all right. Look, this is holding okay. Now, if you come and have a little look here, see how <clears throat> once these sages have fried for about sort of six minutes, uh, I'll come around your way just while Gennaro carries on. Um, just you can probably see the light through it. I don't know if you can. Um, let's see. Let's hold it over by the light there. You might be able. It's um, absolutely delicious. It's kind of like a little a little Pringle. It's so good. So this. Let's plate it up. No, they're um, ready. Um, what I like to do now is just get a little. Uh, you got a spatula? We all good? Yeah. Ready? Ready? Okay. Are you done? Yeah. Just to, let me clean this one on top here. Bless you. Bless you. I'm gonna have a little look. So we're gonna just layer up, and in a way, yeah. although I could have added a little bit more flour. Um, it is more delicate, being a little loose. Um, so actually, it is a fine little balance there. Either way, I know you guys watching will find your own way of doing this the best way. Come down and have a little look at this. The sage is phenomenal. And then what we would do is just finish that <clears throat> with a little grating of Parmesan. Um, and if just, I mean, just look at that, guys. Get right in there, Tiger. Uh, a little grating of Parmesan, that'll melt on top. And then while that's happening, just a little grating of nutmeg on top as well. And that is a really beautiful, beautiful dish. A wonderful starter. Um, at dinner time, if you had that with a lovely green salad, beautiful. Do you want to try some? I want to try some. Please do, big boy. This is all mine. Oh, my God. In there. It's cooked to perfect. It doesn't have to be hard. This is the way. It's lovely and crisp underneath. It's going to be a bit hot. Mmm. 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 Um, you could probably have equal success with sweet potato, roasted mm. in the same way. Um, really, really nice. Um, very happy with that. Have a go at this, okay? Um, click the link below. We're going to have a um, recipe on jamielover.com. Um, so that is recipe number one. We're going to do two more. Can All right. You can't bake for me. Tell me what I'm going to do. What are you talking about? So translate for me. Ah. So, um, it's, it's set. We're going to do another one now, so stay there, don't move, because you're going to enjoy what actually we're doing. It's so, going to be so good. Yes. Do you know what we're doing next? Yes, what we're doing next. <laughs> <laughs> you never told me what to do next. It doesn't matter, it's all I'll good. I'll tell you what we're going to do next. It's all it was is just, we're going to make this fantastic burger, which you... No, no we're not, no. I want to flag the other <laughs> one. We're just going to do a really simple salad. We're going to um, do a very simple salad. So, um, if you can, um, <clears throat> Gennaro, we're going we're gonna to dress the salad here. Uh, come with me. Um, so we're just going to get a nice little platter. Um, everyone always thinks that salads are, are boring. Um, so, um, part of making them not boring is um, how you present them. Uh, having a little bit of fun with it. Um, getting a nice platter. Um, so, 
Let's get a nice, let's get a nice big, okay, let's get a nice big platter for two people. Um, so we're gonna take that beautiful uh, hot squash um, and we're just gonna use that as kind of like a sort of base. I mean, a squash is a vegetable, um, but it's kind of got that nice kind of fulfilling carbohydrate sort of vibe going on. So we're just gonna simply, this is bog standard gem lettuce, bit of rocket, bit of watercress. Gennaro's gonna dress it with some olive oil and some balsamic vinegar. Um, so uh, I'll add a little bit of lemon juice in there as well. Um, balsamic works really well with squash, beautifully. So just a tiny squeeze of lemon juice. And up. Balance that with balsamic. Okay. Um, we're going to go in with the... Little drizzle of extra virgin olive oil. Make sure the oil is good. Look at little, that. Little salt and vinegar. Yes. And then we'll go in with a little balsamic. That's, like that. that's good. Have you put some salt inside? Uh, yeah, darling. Pepper. You can have a little dress away. Okay. Um, oh my goodness me. Look at that. And again, we're going to come back to this beautiful... Just have a look at this lovely roasted squash again. Absolutely gorgeous. Hot and steaming. Of course, when it's hot and steaming, it's kind of, you know, having a salad. Having a salad that's cold and fresh and crunchy and zingy, and then having soft, stodgy, sort of hot, you know, squash. Beautiful. So what I'm going to do, right, just to add to it, is I want to kind of give this... Uh, it's, I want to make this salad sort of a little bit more kind of like a platter salad, OK? So I've got some lovely prosciutto. You could use brasaola. You could use any kind of nice salumi. I'm just going to cover one side of uh, a plate. Can you smell the prosciutto? It's incredible. It really, really is. Yeah. Um, and then what I'm going to do is get a spoon um, and I'm just going to take chunks of this beautiful squash. Um, notice, see this, I mean, look at this sticky stuff. This is the golden. We want the sticky stuff. We want the squash. You know, we don't want to be kind of posh about it. We want to just sort of take nice big chunks of that gorgeous roasted squash, slow roasted squash, and put the squash at the bottom like that. So good. And then I'm going to take this lovely light salad. I'm just going to plonk it in the middle. Now, this is a very simple salad, guys. But really, the point of sort of showing you this is that salads don't have to be boring, OK? You know, that contrast of crunchy, soft, hot, cold, sweet, sour, that's everything that we're getting excited about. And this is what Gennaro taught me when I was a very young boy, when we used to work at the Neil Street restaurant. Oh, bless you. I um, remember those lovely days. I used to work three shifts a day. The third shift would be with him. And he used to bake bread every morning. And he used to sing summertime as he had about 20 kilos of bread proving on the bench, just in his pants. Imagine being 18 years old from a little village, like we'd never seen a foreign face in our life, right? And I'm in the dungeons, the depths of Neil Street restaurant with him, <laughs> with all his hairy body out and his little jockstrap pants and a big old load of bread. I was frightened. I was frightened. Don't really? Don't I? Yes, yes, I used to do that. So look, we've got a little feta cheese. You could use salted ricotta if you wanted to stay on the Italian theme. Um, we've got dairy, we've got citrus, we've got veggies, we've got protein, uh, we've got carbohydrates, a nice little bit of bread on the side. And that, guys, just come and have a look. Very simple, but very lovely little salad. I'd be so happy to have that, uh, well, frankly, for lunch or dinner. Absolutely. Really, really nice. Now, we've done our fritter. We've done our little salad. Um, we're now, oh, what are you doing? You're doing some crispy, but, oh, what a- <laughs> You forgot this. <laughs> there are hardly any oil you can see. It's not stick pan. And, and you, you're just getting crispy bits. And I just get that crispy bit. Very, very clever, Gennaro. Um, so you don't have to waste any of it. Seeds, flesh, skin, juices. Um, imagine doing this every week. Oh, I want to make a curry. Take it out, put it in. Oh, I want to make a soup. Take it out, do your base, do your veggies, do your stock. Chunky or whiz it up. Fantastic. Want to make a salad? Boom. Want to make a ravioli filling, a lasagna, a pasta dish. I want to have a little base to roast a piece of fish on. Fantastic. I want to take a chicken breast, open it up, put some squash in, some basil, some chilli, some mozzarella, roast it in the oven. Fantastic. You name it, you can do it with this wonderful little product. And Gennaro is now taking it to the next level where we've kind of almost got a poppadom, crispy, almost sort of like crackling, bacon-like skin of the squash. Yeah, come on, let's make it on top, everything. Just a little bit. Nice. We've got one more recipe to do. One more recipe. 
So we're going to do hummus. Now hummus is, is, is kind of um, famous in Morocco, all through that Ottoman region. Turkish do a wonderful job. Iranian, I mean, Iranians, Israeli, I mean, everyone's doing versions of hummus, right? The Italians also do versions of hummus. With yes. Cannellini beans, Zolfini beans, Barlotti beans. We are going to use the chickpeas. Now, one uh, little trick um, that we haven't done today is try and get the cannellini beans, uh, sorry, try and get the chickpeas in the jar. Whenever you get beans or chickpeas in the jar, they're always three times better than the tins? Yes, yes. I mean, they're delicious, yes, aren't they? Yes, they are you delicious. You pay a little they're bit big, more for them. That's really, really good. You know, look at that. You do the pay side. more for them, but let's just have a little, let's just do a little, a little. Don't, don't have to your hands. Don't That's all right, I hands. didn't have a grip. Right. No, you still it's don't the have olive a grip. Oil. Can I show you? Yeah, Can I show you? you know? Yeah, can I show you? This is the way we do it in Essex. No, 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 just a second. No, you show me. Okay, so, <laughs> same product, chickpea, different tin. Have a look at the size difference. Right, I don't know if you're going to read it, but it's much, much bigger. Okay, um, there really is a big difference there between one and the other. I'd say that was about twice the size. What you'll get from the jarred one, and they will be more expensive, but you know, good things in life are more expensive. It is, it's so good. More delicious. The broth, the kind of, the juice it comes in is seasoned, it's wonderful. Mm. Mm. That's not. Um, creaminess. So, if you can, treat yourself to a jar, and whatever you make with it, Viva Italia, it's gonna be amazing. So, let's Lovely make this. Lovely pasta with the chickpeas. I just love fritters done, mixing in many different ways. So good. I hardly have to do anything, just put another jar. So look, I'm, we're just making this up, right? So this is, you can call it a hummus, but really, we're just gonna have some fun with some chickpeas. It's gonna be spreadable. You can go smooth, you can go chunky. We're gonna toast some mixed seeds off here, sunflower, um, sesame. Uh, normally when you make um, a, a nice hummus, they use tahini, which is basically, um, it's a sesame seed um, sort of um, butter. Uh, you can get mixed nut butters, you can use those as well. Also, you can get peanut butter. So if you haven't got tahini, and you can get it in all the supermarkets now, just swap it out for these, it'll be delicious. Um, we're just toasting off some nice nuts. Um, we're going to do it with chickpeas and the squash, okay? Yes. So another thing is you can use uh, a food processor, but actually what we can do is we can use like a rolling pin or something, you know, because, I don't know. A pistol and mortar. Look, we can, use a, we can use a food processor and it's like very mechanical, it's very convenient, and I do use it. But I think also it's really nice to be rustic and uneven and erratic. And what you're going to get is a mixture of textures. And I personally think that's the key to a really, really good. So you can use a pestle and mortar, like Gennaro just gave that to me. Or you can use that. Really, what's the difference? Might as well use that. Um, you could use a spoon. I mean, when Gennaro's around, he'll pull out all sorts of implements that look kind of that shape. And if it's after 10 o'clock at night, seriously, don't ask him for anything because they, they go into all sorts of strange places. But you could use that as well, but just make sure you give it a wash. Um, 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 yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. Seeds toasted. They go on our lovely um, chickpeas. The chickpeas, remember, are cooked. They're not dried. Uh, we're going to go in with our beautiful hot squash. Yeah. Um, so we've got our lovely squash. Let's just put that in like that. Look at that, hot and delicious. Gennaro's going to give it a really good pounding. Um, oh, he's using the ladle. There you go. Um, if you thought that Gennaro should have used another implement for this, Put it in the comments box below. What would you have used to make this hummus if it was you here standing with me? Uh, he's using a ladle, and let's be honest, the ladle's a kind of quite big, blunt object with not such a good, sturdy shaft as a handle. You could have used something else, right? Um, okay, we're gonna season it with salt and pepper. Um, I personally like some spice with it. I think Gennaro would agree. I would agree, chili um, is the so best one. A little fresh chili goes in if you had grilled peppers. You can make your expression of hummus as simple or complex as you feel 
best. Um, we are going to add some peanut butter, just to give it that kind of back note. It's that kind of nice, delicious, I don't know how to describe it, that the tahini or the peanut butter or the nut butters just gives it a wonderful sort of base that I love. So the chilli goes in. I'm then going to go in with about a heaped tablespoon of the peanut butter. I'm then going to coriander. roughly oh, chop the coriander, but you could use it. mint, parsley, basil. Um, you can go rough or you can go fine. And then as Gennaro carries on pounding um, into the night, we're going to go uh, a little go on, lemon go on, juice. Go on. And um, we want some good olive oil in there, some lovely cold pressed, extra virgin olive oil. There it is. I have to put them in sight. Okay, so keep pounding, Gennaro. Keep pounding. Okay, I'll do it. And this probably looks like a lot of olive oil, but remember, we've just made hummus there. I mean, that's going to be enough for 10 people. Yeah. Uh, remember, once you've made it, it's good in the fridge for two or three days. Um, you know, you can use it once you've, you've made it in sandwiches, in little casadillas, with little flatbreads, um, in packed lunches with like vegetables and dips. Really, really nice. So let's have a little taste That's what, what the Italian stallion has done with that ladle. There yeah, you go. Yeah, there you go. So look. I've got to use a big spoon on the line. Mmm. Bottle. Go on. Bit more lemon juice. Put a bit of olive oil. Bit as more well. um, seasoning. I've got a plan for the olive oil. Actually, if you oh. we, do, you trust me. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do is get this lovely plate. I'm going to move this salad. Uh, Gennaro is going to dramatically put it in the middle in a big pile. In the, mid, in the middle, Gennaro in a pile. In the middle, Gennaro in a pile. In the middle, in a pile. <laughs> yeah. In the middle. In a pile. In the middle. In the pot, in the middle. And then we make a little well in the middle, and then some oil in the middle, some yeah. crispy breads, some olives. There you go, guys. That is it. That is our real-time recipes. We've done a salad, the hummus, we've done the fritters, uh, some lovely toast. Guys, put your comments in the comments box below. The camera's gonna stop working any minute now, but until it does go off, uh, remember, if you wanna see Gennaro's channel, click through to his channel. If you wanna see another click. recipe with the squash, we've done it on Drinks Tube. We've done the most delicious drink on Drinks Tube. You're gonna love it. There you go. That was lovely from me and Gennaro. Ciao, Bella.